Um, so this is like a, a modern Mark Twain type story. Did you enter into this with that in mind or did that kind of come out organically? Uh, my dad raised me on a, a very small island in North Carolina. Thanks, Dad. And, uh, and I just knew that we could afford that. So I was like, no, that could work. We were going to do something in space with dogs, and we couldn't afford that. So we just decided. <laughs> yeah, that's why. And it worked. I think it was nice. Yeah. Can we that? Yeah. I mean, I think Tyler and I both read a lot of books growing up and liked the feel of movies that, that we watched growing up 20 years ago and wanted to make something that felt like that. We wanted to kind of make like Goonies and like um, that other awesome one. What, Dave, you said you were like, you should make that. And I was like, yeah, I was like, we, stand yeah. by me. Like, you yeah. should stand by me. I was like, yeah, we could do that. We could do that one. Yeah. That, I definitely I yeah. get that feeling. You guys, how much between uh, the dichotomy between you guys was improv and just you guys uh, fleshing out your relationship, and then how challenging was it to shoot mostly uh, on location? I mean, these guys acted really like a lot of what was on the page, and then also added it where they could, and we were always in search of what felt real. So a lot of times what they came up with was better than what was on the page. Right. Like rule number one was, is party. Party. That's Zach, that's Zach. I would love to be like, oh, I wrote that and it's all mine. No, that these gene, they just, they let them go. It was, it was these guys were amazing and I will actually pass it back. Um, actually, um, 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 friendship with, um, uh, with Shia. Um, Shia always have been, um, working so hard with me and just do all the uh, fun stuff and uh, work together, practice, uh, practice, uh, practice uh, our lines and get to, um, um, get, get to remember the whole time line together and then we have been, we, we didn't have been working so hard together then we always make the time to make it real. Friendship is it, all about. <laughs> What, what, what did you guys do? Like, how much wrestling did you watch, like, beforehand? Uh, like, what, what, <laughs> what specifically did you watch? And also, like, what were some of your favorite parts about filming? Like, I grew up reading, like, Mark Twain, and I, I saw so much of it, like, from the very beginning. Like, what, what did you do to prepare for the role, and, like, what were your favorite parts, like, about filming this movie? Um, actually, uh, super, uh, my favorite part is I'm um, doing the, um, uh, Tom McFro. Um, and in, in I don't have been watching the uh, WWE um, for the whole entire time. Uh, uh, with Shia and myself have been watching every every single week on Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> Also to add to that, uh, um, we really wanted, uh, Zach was a, is a really good friend of ours and had been a, a really good friend of ours for a, a bunch of years. Um, and I guess I'll get into a very small, quick origin story here for everybody. Uh, Mike and I were kind of like thinking about, we were like, we should make a movie one day. And we were talking to Zach about it and Zach was like, man, I'd love to be an actor. And uh, he was like, you guys should just make me a movie because I, I want to be an actor. And, and we were like, oh my God, it's fucking genius. We should make a movie starring Zach that seems so right. So we spent a lot of time with him um, and Zach really loves wrestling and we really wanted to um, create as, uh, the most authentic experience we could. So uh, Zach loves wrestling, so we were gonna write about wrestling and make that be a part of it. Zach's really great at swimming. He's like one of the best swimmers I've ever seen, so we should just tell everyone he's a bad swimmer, so then we'll make him a good swimmer. So, you know, we'll build a little arc there, so we try to really tailor the story to Zach and his strengths. Yeah, and wrestling was a bit of an allegory for acting, because we you know, there's not a lot of film starring people with Down syndrome, just like there's not a lot of people with Down syndrome that are professional wrestlers, so it's kind of, yeah. Um, to these festivals and Sundance and other ones, and being inside the industry, you, you, you watch all these films and you figure out what's gonna work, what you wanna do, and I'm just sitting here, and this was so refreshing, and like, I'm laughing at the same time while I'm crying, and Zach, you're a star, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you. You're a star. And, and the question here is, how much of the music did you guys prep before you started filming? Because the, the, the soundtrack that ran with, with their performances was perfect. 
I like the P word too. That comes in for me. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, it means a lot. Um, we, um, Sadoff, Jonathan Sadoff did the score. Um, so so uh, that was uh, him and another guy named Zach and then Gnome did the score. But the, as far as the songs go, we, um, we had written to certain songs. Like there's like a Yola Tango song and there, there's all these songs that we had already written to. And then when we would shoot the scene, we would just sort of uh, sit shy and Zach down. We would just play it. We had a boom box and we'd play it on repeat. It's like one, like the Yola Tango Green Arrow song. And, uh, and I think it sort of infused itself into those scenes and it felt like it was part of the scene. Uh, and then when we were going in to ch pick songs, we were like, we want the Yola Tango song. And they're like, yeah, you can afford that. And we're like, okay, we'll, we'll use that one. And we had probably like 10 or so songs like that for each scene we had pretty specifically picked out. We, I write to music and Mike does too. Thank you. What you, um, what you want people to take away from this film? Um, I don't know if I ever make a movie for that reason. I don't know. I think I, think I, I can't. I, I just I saw a video of Zach and thought it would be incredible to be able to work with him. Uh, the video that I had seen was like a 10 minute uh, um, summary of what we just saw with him and Tyler on a boat, basically. And uh, so that, I hope that thing still exists. It's one of the most incredible 10 minutes I've ever seen. And uh, then I shipped off. I was in, I was in a, a cabin for like a, uh, for a month in the middle of nowhere. And I had that video on my computer and I just watched that 10 minutes of them on this boat for a month. And I fell in love with this dude before I ever met him. Wow. And then um, we got in a room and we started riffing and it just felt like we couldn't go anywhere wrong. Like everywhere we would riff, we'd wind up in some gold. Every time we would riff this way, we'd wind up in gold. And I felt really fragile coming in, but then got even more fragile when we were there. So a lot of the stuff you see on the boat is like me at bottom barrel. You know, so like a, a lot of magical things happen. My mother would say it's Bichette or Kismet or all those Jewish spiritual things. <laughs> so um, a lot of that happened on this, you know? And I was also reaching for God real heavy. And it just all, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I could have heard some of the things that I heard from any other man also at the time. Like we had conversations I wouldn't have carried on with any other person. I'd have just been like, shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> what are you trying, like really deep conversations that you could only have with Zach. Otherwise you dip off into like, it would feel too saccharine. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's no irony in this man. He doesn't have it, it does, he doesn't possess irony. He is so deeply sincere. He's one of the most sincere people you'll ever run into in life. So you're able to have these really profound conversations with him that you wouldn't have elsewhere because there's no, there's no wink, there's no cynical smile. The dude's just stray heart. So I don't know what we were talking about just now. Zach <laughs> in a senior home, um, and there was a really interesting dichotomy there. How did you choose that location? Because there are so many other potential group homes that you could have put him in, but yet you chose to put him in a senior home and show that dichotomy. Yeah, um, some of the most affordable 24-hour care is retirement homes. So people um, that aren't independent sometimes get placed there and they don't belong there. So we heard anecdotal stories about people with Down syndrome being placed in a retirement home and we wanted a complete contrast with outdoor and indoor. So um, like Tyler and I love to be outside all the time and we don't want to be inside ever. And um, a place where I think like the retirement home is drab, it's dreary, and it's, for the story to work, it has to be a place you wanna leave. So that's why we chose that. What, what advice would you give someone who has a disability, who wants to be in the entertainment industry? What, what, what advice would you give them? Um, actually, I'm just picking up my uh, separate in uh, um, my life, um, my life from um, uh, back home. Uh, I do have um, uh, just abilities. Um, 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 as I would say um, um, some people, some people really don't care uh, uh, about me that much because they, they, they really don't, they don't understand about my um, abilities are and and uh, for me um, I. I I I didn't have been in school for I would say um um uh, 
uh, eight years in, and sometimes, um, but I do have our very worst teachers never teach me anything about, uh, I would say the, um, uh, acting, and um, they, um, they really don't care about me, but they care about their, um, um, uh, their kids. So that's why, that's why I don't have been, you know, uh, devastated, and I'm just getting a little um, um, uh, frustrated and do everything. But but for me, uh, I did went to the court, and then I would say, this is kind of our true feelings to hurt me are real bad. Our really bad teachers I never had for the past years of my entire life. Oh yeah, uh, except for, um, except for the, um, of, of my, uh, uh, acting camp, I always do it with, with, um, Tyler for like a, a, a very long years with him, and then we have been doing, you know, the, um, um, you know, the, um, uh, Bulletproof Jackson, yeah. uh, 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 with Tyler Nelson. Yeah, I think, I think, I think sometimes he's saying that people seem like they don't care, but we kind of create our own family here. I care about you. I love you. Yeah, just so you know, um, Tyler, Tyler always has been a really good friend, and and he he always been sense of a really good brother to me. And because we have been working together at the um, you know the um, uh, Zeno Mountain Farm movies with them for like so many years, and and Tyler always be the best one. Uh, I never have a very true friend to be with and to work for this. But tonight, tonight, uh, tonight, I'm doing this for Tyler for of the, um, of the um, peanut butter falcon. For him. Yeah. Mike and I co-directed and Zach sometimes every night would say, Mike, you are the real director today. And then sometimes he would say, Tyler, today you are the real director. So thank you for having, tonight is my night. I appreciate it. Oh, and plus one more, um, um, before, before I did make, Tyler, uh, till then, uh, one person came in but sent me for this movie right now. It would be Mike Shorts. Yeah, uh, Mike Shorts. Mike Shorts always now being a, a really good director, and he knows about all of the um, uh, angle and and um, um, uh, focus about about me about what I. I need to do this to um, learn and, and just to practice really hard and, and I would make it happen for uh, Mike Schwartz. And he always be the best one I never work with. So, uh, this is your for Mike Schwartz. The question is just curious, how long did it take to shoot this film? Did you guys go on, because when it comes to independent filmmaking, sometimes it takes for a week, a month, three weeks. It just, my curiosity is that you're off script are you writing as you go? It just feels so organic throughout the film that it just makes me real curious. <laughs> um, no, I mean, we were kind of fast, but also really fortunate. Um, we had about 30 days and, a, and some prep before we got out there. We'd done some work with Zach before we um, were fortunate enough to get Shia, and then we had a window with Shia. So we kind of hit that and made it our target and figured out how long we had to film each scene and change the writing a little bit and then made sure um, that we had time to prioritize the performances. So we weren't really setting up fancy shots. It's very simplistic in its shooting, and that's to leave enough space for the performances to really shine. Did in the you time. guys get a little bit of time before you started shooting to build a relationship? Because it feels so organic. Like It makes me curious if you guys got to meet each other for a while because it just feels like you've known each other forever. I mean, I understand like the relationship with yeah. you guys, but it just bleeds into the screen, it does. I mean, I'll speak to this really quickly and hand it off to these guys. Like, very quickly when Shia showed up, the first day we threw him in the back of the truck with Zach and drove down to the crab fishing location, and immediately these guys were just into each other. Shia was asking him questions about what he likes, what he doesn't like. Zach was asking him to do more episodes of Even Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, it just, it just went on for another, another 30 days. And do you guys want to speak to that as well? Anita Brown, I'll answer your questions later. Um. <laughs> <laughs> um.
Um, actually, the um, uh, friendship was shy. I had been um, uh, touched it, it, into my heart. I would be a regular person, but just so you know, more of, um, more of, uh, very importantly, I care about Shia a lot because for me, because um, Shia have been, you know, um, on um, struggle and uh, bad times, and but for me, uh, I, I did change Shia's life around to to make it better to be in this movie. That's the real question is all about. Things happen. My mother would say it's bichette or kismet or all those Jewish spiritual things. <laughs> so um, a lot of that happened on this, you know. And I was also reaching for God real heavy, and it just all—I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I could have heard some of the things that I heard from any other man. Also, at the time, like we had conversations, I wouldn't have carried on with any other person. I'd have just been like, "Shut the fuck up," you know. So what are you trying? And, like really deep conversations that you could only have with Zach, otherwise you dip off into the, like, it would feel too saccharine. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's no irony in this man. He doesn't have it, it he doesn't possess irony. I don't know if I could have heard some of the things that I heard from any other man also at the time. Like, we had conversations I wouldn't have carried on with any other person. I'd have just been man, like, shut the fuck up, you know? So what are you trying, and, like, really deep conversations that you could only have with Zach, otherwise, you dip off into like, it would feel too saccharine. I don't know if that makes any sense, but there's no irony in this man. He doesn't have it, that he doesn't possess.